Good morning, all. Um, today we're going to go keep going with uh, fish and shellfish, um, but we're going to talk about alligator meat. All right, so let's get started. <clears throat> Let me share a screen with you guys. So I included from catching to filleting and uses for the alligator as well, so you guys could see all this. All right, so without further ado. Okay, so alligator, I don't know why this is all down there. Um, with alligator, <clears throat> one of the things they look for, like I watched this show called Swamp People <laughs> that um, just completely talks about how they hunt for these things. And there's only a certain month out of the year they can do it. And you have to pay for a fishing tag or for a tag per alligator. So basically they give you this little like zip band you know like they put on your wrist at like an amusement park they have these ones so each alligator they have has to have a tag so they can legally catch it and um, the way they do this is two ways they set a line for it which i'm going to show you a picture of that or they just hunt for them they go out in boats and um they hunt for these things so they either try to catch it like wrangle it or you have to shoot this thing right here on the back of the head in order for it to die like if you can and it's it's skin is almost armor like you could you know try to shoot at these things but a lot of times it just makes them mad and then they submerge and alligators can stay under water for a long long time but anywho the reason um and it's just like any other animal um the prize for this is not just the meat but the leather okay so as you can see here i put these pictures on here um these are alligator skin this is a, a wallet. This is a purse. Um, if you look online, like if you want like an alligator skin jacket, stuff like that, that's made from one piece, um, they're thousands of dollars. And if you could imagine, so if you want this whole bag, you needed a large animal, okay? Say if you're making a jacket that costs like $40,000, um, you have to have a very large skin to work with, which means you need a giant alligator. So that's why some of these bigger alligators are worth so much money. So when they catch these things, they can go from a couple hundred dollars to, uh, you know, a couple thousand dollars a piece. So, and then, you know, you got to see the meat afterwards. Okay. So this is a, this is how they catch these things. These guys will have their tags and they'll set, they'll take chicken, or what they call beef melt, which is, um, I think it's like beef, uh, I want to say it's liver, or well, I think it's liver, and they just let it rot outside for days, okay? Then they take this stank chicken and go around, and they have this really heavy-duty hook, heavy-duty line, and they put these poles up like this, or they hang it from a tree branch that's hanging above um, the water, and then they just dangle this thing about a foot off the water and the alligator has a really good sense of smell. So it smells rotting flesh. That's pretty much the primary um, food source for them is like dead animals. So something gets in the river, dies, it can smell it and then it eats it. Not everything an alligator eats is alive. You know what I mean? They do hunt, but a lot of times it's just, they're like scavengers. So that's why you need them in a, the ecosystem down in Florida and you know, New Orleans, because anything that dies in the water, they eat it. You know what I mean? Like they're the, I don't know what we have up here. They're like the raccoons of the rivers. Um, so this is how they do it. So I want you guys, I'm going to show you this. This is that swamp people show. A gator like the likeness, he attacks that gator to take his food. The next morning, Troy reinforced his hunting team, bringing his regular deckhand Clint and Jacob back to the scene of the crime. This is where we saw the log nest yesterday. This is this one. It was the last day of the season, and Troy was a man on a mission. So I'm going to just keep playing this. You guys can see. So he has this line set up, and he's trying to find this giant alligator. I'm going to show you how they actually catch it. On his last line, he had something out of the ordinary. Well, on top of it, we're just laying on the bottom right there. But he does not want to come He's up. He's under the boat. He's stuck. Uh-uh. He don't want to come up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The, the 
850-pound monster was finally hooked, and it was going to be a fight to the finish. It was unbelievable how strong this gator was. He was trying to pull me in the body is what he was trying to do. Hey, we need help over here. I was definitely holding on for my life right there with that big thing. Kill him again. Clint couldn't get a clean shot. And the Loch Ness Monster went into a death roll. You just don't know what an animal like that's capable of doing. Finally, the beast revealed itself, and Clint took aim. I know they didn't the show it bringing it in, but it. Oh, hold on. Which you see how big this thing is. You got it, Jake? That's big, huh, brother? Damn, we got a 13 foot of today. You know, out of all the alligators I've caught in my life, very few of them stand out that I remember. And he was one of them that I remember real well. Okay, so do you see the size of that thing? See how big that is compared to the little ones? <clears throat> this is going to sell. So 13 foot, they get paid by the foot for these things. This is going to sell for a lot of money because um, they get, you know, the, the skin alone is going to be worth a lot. So just give you an idea, but do you see how they have to catch these things? That he shot that thing five times with a rifle, five times. And it's still, it took the fifth one to actually put it down. So you see how that's the reason they're so expensive is because how dangerous it is. Like when these guys go out, um, sorry, I love the show, but sometimes these go, these guys go out and they catch 40 or 50 alligators in one day. So it's a very, uh, a very hard job. All right, so as far as like, once you have this giant animal, um, to pre preserve the skin so they can sell it, <clears throat> um, and we're gonna get to how they, you know, fillet it and cook it too, but you know, I want you guys to understand like a lot of processes that go into this. Um, it's a really neat technique. They actually like blow this thing up with air because they wanna make sure the skin is pristine and intact so they get more money for it. Okay, so you put a little hole right there. Then he's taking an air compressor and filling this thing with air. So the skin separates from the actual meat. I know if you guys are squeamish, well, don't watch this part. But that's how they do this. And you can see this thing's actually filling up with air like you're airing up a tire. And you see the end of this tail? This one's been sitting off. <clears throat> All right, so they do that. And he goes around and he keeps doing this. He does it to like all four legs. And the reason for this is to pull the, the skin away from the actual flesh so he can. Oh, that's good. Too slushy. Sorry. So he can pull the skin off the flesh and then sell it. See? So then he has to go back. Alright, now see, oh, let's we'll see when you uh when he goes to skin this thing. He just goes right down and all the meat, <clears throat> you know, it's it's easier to get to because a lot of times that skin will be completely wrapped around and very tight and you're more likely to ruin it. So that's how they start cutting this thing up. And we'll go to this one. This chef shows you how to how they're gonna fillet this. You know, it's like a fish, you know, you gotta flop it up there and fillet it. Oh, 
can end up probably using it for different. Uh, he's not going to show him cooking it, but um, that's what I like about it. Like he can break this thing down to several different cuts and use it for several different things. Okay. So the last slide I have, um, I want you guys to see this one is fried alligator. So this is the way I've had it before. And I think it's really, really good. Honestly, this one is they stuff it like a turkey. So these are two different cooking techniques. Um, they're both dry heat cooking. So you remember dry heat, wet heat, combination cooking. Um, this is dry because this is going to be fried. Even though it's submerged in liquid, or it's submerged in oil, it's not going to penetrate the meat. It's just going to crisp it. Um, if you were to stew it, that is wet. <laughs> traditional southern style it's big doors and a small sign to represent Bo's kitchen and bar room Alex Prani is going to teach us how to make the ultimate gator bites wow. Alex Prani head chef Bo's kitchen and bar room and these are my fried alligator bites So here we have some red bell pepper diced into small pieces. We also have some alligator tail meat, which we've cut into about the same size, trailed any excess fat off or anything like that. We also have our batter, which we're gonna be battering the meat in and then dredging in flour What's before we fry. What's the batter made out of? The batter is buttermilk. Mm -hmm. We put some nice spices, paprika, allspice, cayenne, black pepper, celery salt. Add a little bit of flour to thicken it up just so it coats really nicely. Take from there to just regular old flour and we fry. Mm -hmm. So you are just dumping one inch cubes of red pepper into the batter. Right, exactly. And the same with the alligator. We're just gonna throw it all in there. I spent some time in New Orleans and I got to eat lots of alligator. Fell in love with it. So they've been sitting in the batter for a couple minutes. You wanna dredge them? Absolutely. So you've got a slotted spoon so that way the batter can run through it. Yeah, yeah. If you just carry too much with the alligator into the flour, it's gonna get really clumpy. We're really just gonna kind of keep moving it around. So you see like now mostly the flour is starting to starting to cling, the batter is starting to dry up, and you've got some really nice coated alligator. Yeah. And you can just do that really yeah, quickly. Oh yeah, of course. And you kind of really get to see what you're gonna be throwing Thank into you. the fryer there. That makes yeah. so much sense. So we're just gonna drop them right into the basket, kind of shake them around a little bit so they're if anything clumped up. It's a gator bubble bag. We've got it down to when we see the right color, we know we're in the right place. I think that gator bath is about done. Yeah, we are just about there, perfect. So we are fried and we are almost to the bowl and ready to eat. All we really need to add, a little bit of salt now in the bowl. Okay. Toss that around. And here we have three different herbs that I think are okay. really, really nice <clears throat> to work with, especially with this dish. We have some just chopped up really finely lemon thyme, mm. a little bit of chive, and a little bit of chervil. And then we're gonna do the same thing, just mix it around. The best part of fried food is always the dipping sauce. Absolutely. It's my favorite thing to look, I look forward to the dip sauce like I do the fried <laughs> food. So what are we gonna make? Okay, so what we typically like to serve this with is, we call it our chili aioli. All we really do is just take a little bit of shallot and some chilies, blend it up to make a nice paste, and we're gonna mix that into our aioli. And aioli is just a fancy word for fresh mayonnaise with garlic. Exactly. So we're just gonna go straight in. Mm. Yeah. And we're just gonna whisk it together. And, uh, Wait, that's it? That's it. Man, I was getting ready for like six more steps. This is tailgate perfect. Yeah, we keep it we we keep it nice and easy. Yes, if you want to find out how to make the perfect tailgate gate easy. All right. Chef Alex, thank you so much. You see how easy that is? Um, the key with what he did, so when you have, he did that buttermilk mixture. Buttermilk is literally, there's no butter in it. It's not butter like melted and put into milk. It's usually a heavy cream, half and half, some heavy duty milk. Um, and then you put in acid with it. So it actually starts to curdle it a little bit. So for one cup of heavy cream, you're gonna put in one tablespoon of lemon juice. And that actually kind of, the acidity starts to 
not cook the milk, but it curdles it a little. So when you soak things that are tough meat, so if you think of how much, how strong an alligator is, um, that is very, very tough meat. And when it's soaked in that buttermilk, <clears throat> it's actually going to start to tenderize with the, with the acidity in there. So it helps break down. That's why he lets it sit in there for a few minutes. And then, then you, you toss it. So that's the one way. That's the traditional style I've had is where you just batter it and fry it. This one is completely different, but I think it's pretty awesome that they do this. Yep. Go to our website and get the exact ingredients for this. All right, so. Versus, we're gonna make ourselves a rug. So they got the alligator. These guys are way out in the country. Welcome to BarbecuePitBoys.com. Today we're cooking up an alligator on the grill, and it's real easy to do. All right, what we have here is a uh, skinned and clean five-foot gator, and uh, this here is the uh, perfect size for tailgating, or for restaurants, or your own. See what he's got going. So he mixes Oregano, this basil. rub, okay? Which is just all these all right. dried spices. Here we've got some red snapper fresh caught. We're going to be throwing this on the grill too. And uh, we're going to be cutting up some onions. A trinity. We'll be using some carrots, and celery. So a rub is like you take all the spices you like, correct? <clears throat> and you mix them up together. Um, and then here is where he's making the stuffing. So that's the andouille sausage. You just saw him cutting up. And then the holy trinity is what we call mirepoix, celery, onion, carrot. Holy Trinity in Louisiana is um, celery, onion, and peppers, I believe. Um, so they take out the carrot. But this one looks like it had carrots in there too, but I think they just, they add some stuff to it. So what they're going to do is they're going to make this stuffing. Let's skip ahead. And then they're just going to stuff this entire alligator <clears throat> like he's doing here, they took out the insides and they're going to stuff the whole interior of this alligator and then sew it shut. Like you can buy butcher's twine that you can actually cook with and he's going to sew this whole thing shut. Well, I think we're going to hit a commercial here in a second. Let's go here. All right, so once he's got it sewn shut, he takes that rub of all those herbs and spices that he liked. It's called a dry rub. Um, and you just literally, it's called a rub because you rub it all over the animal. And then <clears throat> you let this thing sit for, for a little bit, you know, so it actually starts to, what that happens is the salt pulls the moisture from the meat that you're rubbing and it mixes with, it kind of opens up the pores of the meat. Um, and then it mixes with all those herbs and spices and then starts to resettle back inside the meat. So it actually penetrates. A lot of people think if you put rub right on top of something and slap it on the grill, it's going to get a really good flavor, but it's not. You need to let that, let it absorb it for a minute. So then they take this entire gator, wrap it in foil, and then roast it. Okay. And then he's going to make some other things in here too, but I'm going to skip to the gator part. I think he makes some stew with it. Um, so towards the end, let's go here. They take this thing, open it up. Um, what this is, which is a traditional style for cooking and roasting, <clears throat> is this is probably some acid type spray. So it could be like lemon juice, it could be like lime with something in it, it could be a little bit of vinegar, and they literally just baste it because they want to spray this on here, and then what's going to happen, that's going to like get hot, liquefy some of that meat, and then start to caramelize and make like a nice crust. All right, there you go. I know that one's a little out there, but um, I love YouTube. You can find like, this is, this is true. This is how people actually cook. So those are two different styles for cooking the alligator. Um, let's go ahead and stop this. That's two different ways to cook the alligator. So I really want you guys just to see how other people eat this stuff. Um, tomorrow we're probably gonna do talk about turtles because not many other countries eat alligator like that, um, mainly just the United States, but uh, turtles, that's a, a worldwide thing. They actually sell live turtles um, at some places around here that you can purchase. All right, there'll be some questions for you.